Hello everyone, it's Shane Conto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Lost in the Wasteland, my weekly interview show where we take a deep dive into the perspective of somebody when it comes to movies. And this time we have Mike here from Sif Pop, so getting the whole crew on. It's funny because every time Robert and Aaron introduce somebody, they're like, hey Shane, look, somebody else to come on your channel. But Perfect. Mike, thank you so much for coming on. Shane, appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Absolutely. And you know the drill, those who have seen this show before. So, Mike, would you like to shamelessly plug anything for our viewers to check you out movie-related? Of course. Uh, I write pretty frequently on Sif Pop, so uh, check, uh, check out any articles I write on SifPop.com. I'll be having one coming out this week about a show on Hulu that is uh, just wrapping up, I think, tonight, actually. So that'll be... Oh, you look you look a little confused. It's it's uh, I'm trying to think what show it is. <laughs> so um so I've got that coming out. So you could follow me uh any the articles I post. Uh you can follow me on Twitter at Hilty underscore Mike. So H I L T Y underscore M I K E. Or you can follow me on Letterboxd or Serialize for my TV and movie reviews uh at M Hilty24. Awesome. So make sure to check out Mike's work on Sif Pop. Is it How I Met Your Father? It is, yeah. Yep. It is how I'm I like, what do, I, what do I watch on Hulu on Tuesdays? <laughs> I mean, so, that's, that's, really, that's really it right now. I've got a couple of other things in the queue, but that's the main one that mm -hmm. just, just wrapping that up and then on to the next one. So yep, I'll, I'll be that. watching that finale tomorrow morning. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. So, and it's funny, I think I've only watched like 10 episodes of How I Met Your Mother and it was like the last 10 episodes. <laughs> oh, oh, that is unfortunate. That is a odd frame of reference because <laughs> a lot happens in the almost 200 episodes before that. Yeah. Um, that last yeah. that last season was good. It wasn't great, but it was it wasn't good. Uh, by the standards mm -hmm. of the the previous seasons before that. So. It is on my watch list to actually check out, like, the rest of the show. It just so happened that a bunch of my friends our senior year of college were, like, they were huge How I Met Your Mother fans, and they're like, oh, my God, it's ending, and they wanted to binge it. I'm like, well, I wanted to hang out with you guys today, so I guess I'm going to sit and watch this with you. <laughs> so I wasn't as angry. Because obviously I didn't have any kind of attachment to the show. <laughs> oh man, that's those those last ten episodes with not a lot of context before that. That I'm sure there there must have been lots of questions, a lot of hey, what's what's going on? Why, why are why is this happening the way that it is? So yeah, that's, I feel like I knew like, enough about it to be <laughs> like I kind of get what's going on here. And I also get like, wow, after all that, you, on the bunch of you have been watching this for years and this is what they gave you. Did, uh, were they, were they mad about the final episode? Yeah, yes. that's, that uh, season or series finale is a bit of a polarizing one, unfortunately. Yep. As a Lost fan, I understand polarizing finales. <laughs> it's funny because I was like the so I watched that religiously and that was my senior year of high school when that ended. And I remember spending like the four hours that Sunday night watching the pre thing, the two hour finale and just being like, huh, I appreciated that. And I went into school and everybody's like, that was garbage. And I'm like, did I watch the same, same thing as everybody else? Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't have called it garbage. It was, not what I was maybe fully expecting, and that's okay. Well, you know, that's if they had a vision for, you, for right? it. It is what it is, right? <laughs> I feel like Lost spent six seasons subverting your expectations. Yes, it did. And yes. it's just like some of them were great, some of them, huh? But you know, but <laughs> there's a little peek into both of our TV references. Mm -hmm. But time to start with some of the actual questions that I have for you, Mike. <laughs> so. This first one is always an interesting one because some people love answering this and some people hate it. But Mike, what's your favorite film? Well, so I've, I've had a little time to re reflect on this. Uh, it is a bit of a loaded question because mm -hmm. everybody's taste in movies changes uh, every now and again. I finally 
have settled on because I used to have one that was usually consistent. But when I really got to thinking about it, my favorite movie of all time is The Lord of the Rings, specifically The Two Towers. Okay. And the reason why The Two Towers is my favorite, um, and this, you know, there, one of your questions a little bit later is, you know, what do we love about movies? And mm -hmm. just one thing that um, I kind of get into a little bit is that it checked all three of the boxes that I'm looking for for why I love movies. Um, so... It, it made me like really, it made me really feel something. Uh, that speech that Sam gives at the end uh, with the, there's some good in this world and it's worth fighting for. I loved yeah. it so much that I got it tattooed on my shoulder. Um, so it, it just gave me all the feelings. The spectacle of watching the, that Battle of Helm's Deep in theaters um, was unlike anything that I had ever seen on that that scope before. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just it was just amazing and just the memories that you create. I I went to go see that with a group of friends. We saw all three of them uh, that opening weekend. Um, and that sec the second one, uh, when we went to go see the two towers, we took up almost an entire row at the theaters. When you you know back in the day when you couldn't actually reserve a seat, you just yeah. had to get there early. Mm -hmm. And hope that you could find enough seats for you and your friends. Uh, I, I love that. So, so for those for those reasons, after careful reflection and thinking mm -hmm. about it, that's why the the Two Towers is is my favorite movie of all time. I am staring across the way from my tree beard Pop Funko, <laughs> staring back at me, very pleased. Very nice. <laughs> Welcome to the Lord of the Rings Love Club, where myself and Robert <laughs> reside because. <laughs> Lord of the Rings are my favorite too. So it's it's hard not to not to have those your favorite because it's just such a grand story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're if you're somebody that loves, you know, loves a, a sprawling epic, uh, this is it. If you're looking for a lot of emotion, a lot of depth, a lot of you know metaphors and messages for great things, this is it. If you're looking for you know fantasy and just anything like that, th this is for you as well. So. It, it does check a lot of boxes for a lot of people. I get it. It's not for everybody, but it's, it's pretty close to universal uh, in terms of it, it has a little something for everybody. It certainly does. And that's why I always argue, I feel like Lord of the Rings, those films are some of the most well-rounded pieces of cinema ever. Mm -hmm. It just does so many things. It has so many genres. It just does everything so well. And that's why we love them. Uh, absolutely so i could definitely appreciate that and also i remember those days i definitely the avengers was one of those where it just like show up hour and a half early to the theater and be like we're getting seats we need to make sure that we get seats together and make sure that the seats are not in the front row either yeah that was um now it's can we hop on? Well, I feel like besides Spider-Man, maybe that really hasn't been an issue to try to get seats for movies at this point. So, no. uh, but Home uh, No Way Home brought back some memories because I'm like sitting there, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get tickets for like six o'clock on that opening night. I'm like, holy Ooh. crap. <laughs> this is trickier than I thought it was going to be. Okay. And then that was the moment I realized this movie's going to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it still is. And it's well-deserved. Yeah, as well. Absolutely. Now, what's your earliest memory of going to the movies, Mike? So I've got a couple that okay. I have here. So the the first, I'm pretty sure, and I confirmed this with my dad actually, the first movie I saw in theaters or theaters per se was my dad took me to go see the 1989 version of Batman at a drive-in movie theater. Oh, nice. I was I was pretty young. I wasn't, I wasn't really understanding what was going on. Uh, so that was like my first, like real hands down, like my dad confirmed, yeah, that's the first mo movie that we took you to. I'm like, okay. I didn't really remember the movie that much. I was, again, I was pretty young. Um, mm. The one that I can remember for sure was going to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in theaters, nice. which again, that's... If looking back at that original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movie, it's it's pretty dark. Yes, yeah. it, 
it's got some things that it's trying to say and there's there's bad language words and everything like mm -hmm. that too so um but i remember it distinctly because before before the showing um there was a live action nunchuck demonstration at the movie theater um I was like what is what is going on i just want to watch the movie and then there was a guy who was wielding around nunchucks and just demonstrating it for us i'm like this is cool i want to see turtles kick some kick some ass so why why am i watching this right now <laughs> uh so there there's that and then my my last one is that like i i saw beauty in the beast with friends mm -hmm. and family seven times in the theater some of it Jeez. wasn't my decision uh -huh. but that's something that I distinctly remember as like an early, very early memory of going to the theaters is seeing Beauty and the Beast so many times. I, I don't under really understand why. And it's still to this day the movie I've seen the most in theaters. So, so I got that going for me. I guess. Here you go. I feel like I have to bring this up because you'll appreciate this. I remember destroying my VHS for Secret of the Ooze because mm -hmm. I watched it so many times. And, you know, you have Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. But you also have Kevin Nash as, like, Super Shredder that was absolutely terrifying all those docs and just, like, what's going on here? Yeah. So, uh, good yes. memories. The uh, that second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie is, is great, and I will embarrass myself a little bit by saying in high school um, for a talent show, a uh, talent show, I, I did dress up with three other friends as Ninja Turtles, and we danced to Ninja Rap from Secret of the Use. I have a lot of respect for you right now. Thank you. <laughs> I, you I appreciate that. <laughs> now, Mike, do you have a particular favorite genre of movies? Um, I, I thought about it a, mm -hmm. a little bit, and I kind of went by just how many movies I have in a particular genre. Okay. And I think I ultimately came to the conclusion that, no, I, I don't have a favorite genre of movies because I'm willing to at least give most anything a chance to some extent or another. If if you add a gun to my head and say, yeah, pick pick a genre, the genre that I have the most, uh, most movies of is, is action. Mm -hmm. Um I think it's because action just encompasses a lot of different things and it just keeps my attention a little bit more, followed very closely by by the comedy, uh, the comedy section as well. So um, so yeah, those those two would be probably neck and neck, but I, I will give most movies at least a shot uh, to at least entertain me and I'll go in with an open mind. I'll probably judge it a little bit along the way, but whatever it is what it is. But I I don't have a particular genre that I will flock to um, if as, as a favorite or anything like that. And that's fair. And I could, I could appreciate because as somebody who has a reputation now at Sif Pop that I watch anything and everything, it's the kind of thing where it's just like, you know, just because it's a specific genre doesn't mean it's not going to work. Yep. And I used to, well, horror movies still scare the crap out of me. So yeah. I'm a big baby. Um, but like, I would not watch them when I was younger. And I find him like, I'm going to rip this Band-Aid off and curl up in a fetal position on the couch watching the Babadook. Because mm -hmm. that is what happened. Yeah. Um, but, you know, being able to give them a chance, I think is an important thing. Yeah, and I've, I'm not much of a horror fan either. And um, one of the reviews I did for Sif Pop, I did a Sif a Sif binge on the paranormal activities movies mm -hmm. never seen them no interest in them but i gave them a shot and it was it was a fun thing to do i guess but it was still something that i i learned that you know some of them worked really well and i enjoyed and some of them i didn't and that's yeah. that's fine and i i think in january i i volunteered to review redeeming love which boy that uh not I quite what I was expecting theaters. at all. And, uh, but somebody had to do it. And I said, I'll give it a shot. Why not? And, and then that's literally the end of, the, of, of that. So, yeah, I sat in theaters for that movie. And I'm just like, it was one of the points where two women had babies with them. Yep. 
and I didn't even care. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not, not one bit. I had two babies at Dune and cared very, very much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've... But no, I was sitting, watching Redeeming Love, and I'm just like sitting there, like these babies are crying, like, I'm with you, child. <laughs> like, get it what you, is this movie you you understood the assignment good good job <laughs> you all thank you there you go now mike do you have a particular favorite filmmaker so i i thought about this really hard because mm. i i came up with with two answers one's a pretty yeah. obvious answer it's, it's spielberg like how can it not be be spielberg because he's got such a wide catalog mm-hmm. of all these different great movies uh that are are timeless so yeah. they're great um i, I kind of wanted to look for something uh, look for someone that may not get a whole lot of love um and i ultimately came up with i think right now my favorite filmmaker is taika waititi and for for a couple reasons one my my wife's from new zealand so right. we've got we've got already kind of a built-in affection for a fellow Kiwi uh, mm-hmm. like that. So that there's that. And then also, it, whether it's TV, he's knocking it out of the park with what we do in the shadows, um, you know, the, the, the new pirate one, uh, so yep. our flags mean death our, or something. Our like flag that. means death. Yeah. Uh, those first six episodes, I'm so hooked. Yeah. So it, it's But between that and between all of his movies, Mm -hmm. you know, to bring him in and to do a Marvel movie and to resurrect, well, not resurrect, but to bring back Thor into the the forefront and give him a little bit more depth and comedy and and everything like that is was great. Jojo Rabbit was was an amazing movie. Even some of his older stuff as well, like the What We Do in the Shadows. The the movie is one of my favorite movies of all time and he, he did another one um i think a little earlier than that it's called boy yep. um that's that's one that i i loved i was surprised at how much i i like that but he he's got a wide range of different things and his just comedy style is just it hit, hits me in all the right places mm-hmm. and he's just been on this amazing run lately so i i will give I will give him the benefit of the doubt for just about anything. And I'm really excited for what he has, what he has coming out in the future, which I can't always say that about what Spielberg has had in the, in the can lately, you know, other than, you know, West side story, some of the other ones, even before that have been, you know, ones that I haven't been looking forward to. They're still good, but they're just not ones that I'm looking forward to as much as what I'm looking forward to from Taika Waititi. Yeah. It's kind of like, I wasn't excited to go see the post, but like I saw it, I'm like, this is a really made, this was <laughs> like it's Spielberg movie, so it's well made movie. And just like, I'm not like, oh my God, I can't wait for the post to come out. Right. But I right. am that way about when Thor Love and Thunder comes out, because before all the multiverse of madness stuff like blew up, I'm like, hands down, Love and Thunder is my. Marvel movie for 2022 Mm -hmm. and uh when they drop the first trailer probably with Multiverse of Madness I'm just going to be so excited and I there's nothing quite as fun as seeing Taika Waititi dressed up in the thriller outfit at the end of Boy that's so great and then I'm a huge hunt for the Wilder People uh fan too I love that movie so much Sam Neill (laughs) and no Julian way. Dennison is so fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that kid. Yeah, absolutely. Not so much a little kid anymore, though. <laughs> no, def- definitely not. Um, I think one of the last things I saw him in recently uh, is that um, Air New Zealand makes really fun and elaborate commercials, and he was in one not too long ago, and I was like, oh, you're you're that kid. You're not a kid anymore. Okay, yeah, cool. I think it was the Santa Chronicles 2. I saw him and I'm like, oh my God, you're a teenager. Mm-hmm. Like, holy crap. And then obviously he was in Deadpool too. It's like five fits. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that kid. Mm-hmm. Now, segue. Uh, who are some of your favorite actors and actresses? Uh, so some of my favorite actors. Um, so I'm, I'm a big 
Leonardo DiCaprio fan. I, mm-hmm. I think what he's doing right now, he's, he's doing a lot of amazing stuff. Um, I, I, I really liked Don't Look Up. I, I didn't think it was, you know, the best movie of the year, but I s- still enjoyed it a lot more than I thought. And it was a very different performance than what I, what we usually get from Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm like, oh, I, I see what's going on. You're, you're a bit of a chameleon yeah. in terms of what you can and can't do. Okay, I, I got this. So, um, so DiCaprio, um, I, I love Robin Williams and Robin Williams is another one who's got a lot of range. You know, his his late 80s work is is just unlike he that was a quite a run for him between Good Morning Vietnam, Dead Poet Society, Awakenings, mm-hmm. all of like just those were a lot of great movies and they were kind of a bit off type for him. Yeah. And it just showed his his range and just what he can do. And when when I heard about his his death a while back, I, it crushed me because I, f- I felt like he still had a lot in the tank and um, a lot to give from a film and even TV standpoint and just gone gone too soon, yeah. unfortunately, and um, someone that I, I definitely miss uh, having him on screen. So there's Robin Williams is definitely up there. Um, I'm a big Anna Kendrick fan. Um, I, you know, I've seen her, you know, do the serious roles. Um, you know, I the first time I ever saw her in anything was Up in the Air, and I I love oh, Up yeah. in the Air. It was so good, and I was like, oh, who are you? I'm I'm interested in seeing more of you. And then, mm-hmm. and then she just kind of blew up from there, and she's made a niche, you know, with being in these funny comedy movies. She's she's very talented. She can sing. She can do a little bit of everything, and I'm. I, I just love Anna Kendrick. She's she's great. And then the last one, I'm uh, I'm a, shamelessly I'm a big Kristen Bell fan. I I love Kristen Bell from her Veronica Mars days. Veronica Mars is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. But to see some of the stuff that she's been she's been able to do lately has been has been really great. And um, I will I will go and watch anything that Kristen Bell is in. So. Those are the ones that I, you know, when I read that question, I'm like, those, those are those are the four. I'm a huge Anna Kendrick fan too. And I remember buying Up in the Air for $2 on Black Friday out of one of those bins at like Best Buy. I'm like, mm-hmm. why not? I love that movie. I love that movie so much. And that cast is impeccable. That, and it's funny because that wasn't the, she wasn't the one that I fell in love with watching that movie. It was actually Vera Farmiga. I'm like, yeah. who is this? Mm-hmm. She's amazing. <laughs> and yeah. I have that yeah. kind of feeling about her. But like, I love Anna Kendrick. And uh, Kristen Bell, the show that made me love her so much is The Good Place. Oh my God. <laughs> I can listen to her saying, what the fork? A million times over and never get tired of it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, the good place is, dare I say now an underrated, very underrated TV show. So, um, and it's just great stuff. The cast is great and mm-hmm. Kristen Bell and Ted Danson leading the way with it. So yeah, I, I would have to agree mm-hmm. with that. And like Kristen Bell could sing too, like really, yes. really well. And like, I, I enjoyed her in the first season of Central Park, and obviously, like, she stepped away and got, um, re- that character got recast, but, like, she's great. Anything that she pops up in, like, I watch almost every single Valentine's Day, I wind up watching Forgetting Sarah Marshall with my fiance, <laughs> just call. experiencing that. And, like, I feel like she's, especially in that film, like, the underappreciated one, because, like, she doesn't get the really showy kind of performance like Jason Siegel got, does and obviously Russell Brand who's just there to be Russell Brand mm-hmm. and then everybody else but those are some great choices and Leo I I didn't love Don't Look Up I really enjoyed it like I would watch it again like I had fun with it but yeah. that unbelievable insecurity that he just channels is so incredible and especially coming from one of the greatest leading men in Hollywood like him with his insecurity and George Clooney with his paranoid face 
like <laughs> they're so much more fun when they're doing something different yeah. and same could be and 100 percent feel that way about brad pitt too they all have like this under layer of like something really really interesting and that's why i love seeing george clooney in like coen brothers films because he gets to be fun like that in films like that um but now mike what's a film that you could just like pop in any day and just watch it like any day i had a lot of contenders for this one i don't i really had to to think about this and it, it came down to two to two main choices. Okay. Um, both of them have stories associated with them. So the first one is the the Matrix, the, okay. the original Matrix. Um, the it's it sounds so weird to say original Matrix, Matrix because it's it's twenty years old and there's three other movies now uh, with it. Okay. So, um, but I remember going to California to visit my uh, my mom's side of my family with my mom and sister. Mm-hmm. Um, it was because I distinctly remember it was 1999 because my uncle was a little paranoid about Y2K. So he had a lot of, he had a lot of stuff uh-huh. uh, in the guest rooms uh, just in case something happened. Um, and he had the VHX or VHS of the matrix. Mm. And my sister and I would watch it. And at the end of, of it, there was a special feature that was like a making of, and we would watch that. And it's, that's not a short movie. So to add in like an extra, like 20, 30 minutes for like behind the scenes stuff, that's like a three hour investment. And after we were done with it, we would say, Hey, you want to watch it again? We'd be like, yes, yes, let's watch it again. So, um, so, so yeah, that's, that's definitely one. And the other one is uh, 10 things I hate about you. And the, the reason why is because the first actual job that I ever had that wasn't caddying or babysitting, and no offense to anyone who thinks caddying is a, a real job. For me, it wasn't because it, mm. was, it was just a summer job, but, you know, but I worked at a Michael's Arts and Crafts store. Okay. And we had in the break room one movie or two, technically. One was a training video that none of us wanted to watch. And the other was 10 things I hate about you. So anytime that any of us were on break and the one, the few of us that didn't have a car and had to get mm-hmm. dropped off by mom or dad until, you know, until we got a license, there was nowhere else to go. So what did we do? We would pop in 10 things I hate about you. So I know that movie very well. And to this day, I still love it. No matter how go. many times I watch it, it's ridiculous. But I, I still, I love it. So those, those would be the two that uh, movies that I could watch every day uh, would be those two because I have watched them like for large swaths of time and still didn't get sick of it. Oh, I appreciate the two stories that came along with them too. Made it extra fun. I definitely appreciated that. Now, what's a film that you connect closely with because it relates to another interest of yours? So another interest of mine was, is basketball. I, okay. I love basketball. Uh, I love what's going on with the NBA right now. I love that it's March Madness time. Mm-hmm. I, I just, uh, you know, we all have our sport that we love so much. And for me, it's basketball. And um, for me, the, the movie that just, the best basketball movie to me is, is White Men Can't Jump. And I, I love it. It was not... You know, that's another example of a movie that I'm like, I think I'm too young to watch this. And then when I did end up watching it, you know, when I was older and could like appreciate some of the jokes, I'm like, yeah, I was way too young to watch this when I was when I was younger. But it's it's funny. Um, Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes just play off each other so well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just it's just a great basketball movie. And yeah. That's that would be that would be the one. Awesome, I can appreciate that. Um, baseball is my sport, and God, I could throw in major league anytime, anywhere. It just, I think, when I got my booster for COVID, like that hit me hard. Yeah, and like I didn't get up off the couch the whole entire day. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna watch major league. <laughs> 
Also, Wesley Snipes. Also, yeah, that's, there you go. Just unsung hero of the sports genre, Wesley, Wesley Snipes. Snipes. Um, two questions for you. Who's your team? So, first question, who's your team? I, I'm born and raised in the Chicago area, okay. and in the 90s, you know, being a Bulls fan was was great. It hasn't been that great lately. They've been doing really well, but I'm a Chicago Bulls fan. Through and okay. I feel like any kid who watched Space Jam was like, I love Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, when I did watch basketball, I'm from New Jersey and actually did actually like the Nets. So I'm like, the thing is, I also grew up like 10 minutes from Philly across the river. So like, I okay. really should have been a Sixers fan, but like, I had that new, I have always had New Jersey pride. I actually got made fun of this for this by Aaron. <laughs> during a podcast because mm -hmm. i said because like living in new jersey you get access to philly and new york and like i get screenings and stuff like that and that's really cool and i'm like i'm privileged to be able to live in new jersey and aaron typed in the chat first time ever any <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like wow shade i'm not enjoying this jersey shade but mm -hmm. i can definitely appreciate bulls and my other question is have you started have you watched any of the new Lakers show yes. from Adam McKay so far? Mm -hmm. Are you caught up on it? I uh, so I, I've I've watched the first two episodes, which I think yeah. that's what's yeah. out on HBO Max right now. Um, I I'm very curious to see where it goes from from there. Um, I, I love the way it's shot. You know, with it like it it looks very old school. I love the breaking the fourth wall. Uh, that's going on with it. Um, the, the Showtime Lakers are that's a fun team to to watch and to follow. So I'm curious to see where it goes. A little confused about the Jerry West slander with with it. Um, I'm kind of curious to see his reaction to it because it hasn't always portrayed him in the most positive light. But um, I'm I'm enjoying it so far. I'm curious yeah. to see where it goes. But I guess I we'll have to wait and see the first time since watching the fantastic four movies that i'm like oh my god it's michael chiklis oh, and i was like and like i enjoyed that interaction between him and john c R i love john c Riley in the show so yeah. much i so for for sif pop i did a binge on the show gotham and okay. um so about i think middle of the second season um they get a new captain and it's Michael Chiklis. I'm like, oh, oh you're a you're a cop again. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's... You can only be Ben Grimm and a cop. That's like no, it. Th that's that's it. You know those, you know the thing, or you know a disgruntled, angry cop. <laughs> there you go. But I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. And like, like, like basketball is not my sport, but like I have an appreciation for sports in general. And like. You know, it has all that Adam McKay flair and everything. I'm just curious. I I'm having fun with it. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if they'll actually show basketball. I'm <laughs> getting getting a little antsy for that. Um, I'm, you know, even let's just start with the practice, maybe, um, and more more of the players. But I'm I'm curious to see where it goes, and um, yeah, I'm having fun with it. So who's a who's your baseball team? So I'm so this is weird. So this is going to be very unexpected. But I'm a Diamondbacks fan. Oh, um, yeah, I was not expecting that. I am one of five <laughs> outside of the state of Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, so because the thing is, it's like I remember. So I have a little story. So a little bit of a side story mm -hmm. here. So I remember I used to go to Phillies games at the vet and stuff like that when I was like young. But like I didn't really like baseball then. I was 10 years old. And I had ESPN on because at that point I was a football fan and I'm a Giants fan and people did not like me where I grew up because that's deep Eagles country. Yeah. <laughs> so including my brother. Um, so but the thing is, like, I have an appreciation for the Phillies. I love the Phillies. And they're, you know, Phillies sport is a whole other thing. <laughs> People from Philly are a whole other thing. So um, I have appreciation for that. But like I was watching ESPN. This was May 2001. And they started playing baseball highlights. And I remember the Diamondbacks won a, like a 14 inning game. 
Randy Johnson struck out 20 batters in nine innings, tied game, and they won on a walk-off walk with the bases loaded. And I'm like, what is this game? <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> and like seeing Randy Johnson do that instantly favorite player and had been my, and still my favorite player and was my favorite player until he retired, even though he retired as a giant. And it yeah. hurt me so deeply to see him get his 300th win in a Giants uniform. I'm just like, traitor. Well, to be fair, they're the ones who wouldn't keep him. So yeah. I don't blame him. And to be fair, he's also like, they're his hometown team. So I'm like, I'm not going to blame him to go home and play for the Giants. I'm going to blame the Dimebacks front office who wouldn't even take – he offered a pay cut to stay with them, and they still wouldn't keep him. I'm like, you guys are a bunch. Yeah, of that's guys. on the organization. Then it's like, screw yeah. you. Um, but they sucked at the time, so it was like they were just like. Well, wasn't wait wait a second though? Wasn't that the year that they won the World Series though well, against? So against 2001 the was indeed the year. So I like that was May 2001. I'm like, I love this Diamondbacks team. And I lucked out very much as a fan. <laughs> I'm just like, they won the World Series the first year I watched baseball and then have done nothing since. And, yeah. <laughs> like, they, they sporadically really tried. make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And, like, the closest they ever made it back was getting absolutely railroaded by the Rockies in the National League Championship Series. Because I remember, Rockies swept the Phillies – swept the Diamondbacks and then got swept by the Red Sox and that's how the season ended it was a very uneventful playoff I'm just like uh this sucked um but you know I'm just glad baseball's back and they're not in a lockout anymore because I was gonna flip out I'm yeah. like you people had months to figure this out it was, it was getting a little dicey there for a while like are we are we really gonna just keep doing this this back and forth where we're just going to get into a pissing match between the players and the owners and you know they're the owners are going to give up a little bit more of their you know 10 billion dollars or like billions and billions of dollars of revenue like come on guys what are we doing and so, you know baseball's back universal dh 12 team playoff I'm okay with that. I'm glad they took away the stupid seven inning double headers and the runners on second the, the base. Ghost team. runner on on <sighs> second. What are, like, what is this second grade? No, exactly. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, you get paid millions of dollars. One of you can hit a home run. Win it <laughs> or win or it for reals. Come on. <laughs> One. It's like you can get your own run. Thank you. I know. So. I know. Right. But, yeah, so I could definitely appreciate the sports thing. And we could combine ours and just watch Basketball. Basketball was the second movie on my, you know, I was going by feel. And, uh, you know, I, I love White Men Can't Jump, but Basketball is just one of those guilty pleasure movies that I, I'll, I'm happy to admit that I love basketball. It's it's not like in my top 100 movies of all time, but I still love it. It's just that level of ridiculous. And it's got a lot of good stuff to say about the commentary on what sports is well, right now. That's the thing. Like you can, if you go into anything not expecting commentary from Trey Parker and Matt Stone, then what the hell are you thinking? I know. <laughs> so like, Shame I just- you rewatched all 24 seasons of South Park <laughs> and that is, that I'm is caught funny. up and now I'm watching it live and they just had an episode last week um making fun of teenagers and Aerosol. Oh wow. <laughs> it, it was actually refreshing because so many of the episodes now are very like talking about politics and stuff like that it was just fun to have like like an old school just like stupid episode of south park mm -hmm. about stupid teenagers and aerosol guns yeah well so i i had watched um the first episode of this season um and the premise was pajama day pajama day is taken away i was like okay i could get on board with this um simple premise where it ended up i was like Oh, oh man, this this is not what I was expecting at all. Um, I I get what they're trying to say. It's it's pretty upsetting, but 
I hear you. I really do. <laughs> but yeah, it's. The, I'll have to check out that. I haven't checked out that uh, that episode that you're talking about with the, the airsoft and teenagers. I'll, I'll have to check that out. I'm the, excited for that one. The part where it really got me, where it was just like, you have to wear your pajamas or you can't come in the restaurant. It's like, it's okay. You can just take them off when you get to the table. It's like, then what's the point? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> looking at the screen, I'm just like, oh. That's, that's a good point, you guys. They, thank you for for bringing that up i'm just like this didn't wait too, too close to home but the thing that made me laugh the most was the progression of the news reporter and by the oh end it's in a full <laughs> sss outfit just speaking in german i'm just like what is this nazi germany <laughs> oh my god the so the first like i was not expecting them to say to say that because Again, just the premise is very simple. You know, yeah. pajama day is taken away. And then the first time that they said it, it was like, what is this Nazi Germany? I'm like, oh, God, like, this is a big topic of conversation, right? Now. OK, I, I see where this is going. And they just kept saying it. And I was like, oh, oh, OK, this 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 hurts. And yeah, that reporter who just just reverts, you just go, yeah, you just go straight into just speaking German. Just he's just had enough and he's just yeah. That was hilarious. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad to see that these these guys still have it. So 25 seasons. Like 25 seasons. speaking of I know you mentioned a couple of times I was, you were way too young to watch this. My stepbrother showed me South Park live when I was like, I had to be like six or seven years old. Oh, that is oh, that is. That's I too, watched too that young. Halloween episode live, the first one, the pink eye episode, because <laughs> I distinctly remember Kenny dying three times and Chef singing Thriller. Yes. I... Really dressed up as the throw. I'm just like, that is etched in my brain. And then the other episode with Damien <laughs> and the boxing match between Jesus and Satan and how Satan's the only one who bets on Jesus and then throws the fight. And he's like, I'm drinking all of your money back to hell with me. And I'm just like, oh, my God. The, it, because that's that's first season. Yes. Like first season, crude animation. Yep. And I, I think the episode I love from that season was when um, with the volcano and the video that they show where – Hey, what's the best way that you can, you know, you know, protect yourself from a volcano? Duck and cover. And I'm like, oh my god. Really? Duck and cover from volcanoes and lava. And th there's one scene where they do that and just the lava just goes over them I'm like this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant stuff. This Waiting awesome. for them to be like get under your desk. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz you know because you know that's going to save you. <laughs> I I grew up in the Midwest where we where a tornado drill consists of us going to our locker and covering our head and hoping for the best. That was our that was a tornado drill to us and we thought nothing of it. We're like, okay, yeah, this this makes sense. But when you look back at him like is that really the safest thing for us for us to do in a situation like that? Like get in a closet Standing under or something, something heavy that could fall on us cool thanks thank you appreciate there, that there we go and now for something completely different like the rest of the questions <laughs> but that was a fun tangent so <laughs> now mike who's a movie character that you feel like you connect with on a personal level so i had i had this question asked to me you know a couple years ago okay. and uh, the the question the the one that I ultimately settled on, which I, I guess I'm gonna have to settle on uh, here because I couldn't really think of anybody else, was was Christian from Moulin Rouge, and the the reason why um, is because it, he's just a hopeless romantic, mm -hmm. um, a writer, uh, just cares about the truth, beauty, freedom, and love in the world, um, so. I will, I will go with that one because, you know, it's one that resonated with me a lot. It's, you know, something that 
I, I greatly appreciate it. And, and yeah, that's, that's one that I connect to on a, on a personal level. Awesome. And, you know, I think he's the, one of those kinds of characters where it's just like, he's there for us to be able to connect with. And if you have like some of those, like, I know uh, my fiance is like, I'm, I'm usually the romantic one. So it's like a nice thing. It's just like seeing him. It's like those kinds of characters are so positive and fun and like engaging the watch. And like, you need something grounded. I feel like in Mulan Rich, cause like everything else is not no. <laughs> just like over the top. Everything's over the top. And you, you, from the very start, you, you know that this does not end well. Like, oh, yeah. cool. Thanks for, thanks for pointing that out in the first couple of minutes. So I guess it's all downhill from here. Thanks, Baz Lerman. Appreciate that. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just, like you said, it's just the, the positivity and um, just the, the hopeless romantic mm -hmm. um, part of it, um, you know, and just, trying to see the best and everything. Yeah. Like I, that's one that I really, really connected with and just kind of stuck with me um, throughout the years. Now I'm thinking in my head, Romeo and Juliet, Moulin Rouge, Gatsby and Elvis. Yeah. Well, it, things aren't ending well. No. <laughs> for a no. lot of these people. Nope. <laughs> and we see a consistent trend with, with a lot of this. And then uh, Baz Luhrmann must just, like a sad ending it's and then you have australia and i don't recall if either of them died because my attention sure did yeah at some yeah. point I, that that one i i don't remember and i don't remember because i think his first one is strictly ballroom i that one i don't i don't remember that one at all so i don't know maybe maybe he is just a sucker for sad sad endings and just you know pulling the rug from under us i don't know I am quite interested to see how that Elvis movie turns out, though. I'm, it has piqued my interest. Now, maybe it's just Tom Hanks and ridiculous prosthetics, but I don't know. Now, uh, what film do you love that you think people would be surprised to hear? So uh, I am I'm an apologist for the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie. Okay. I, I love that movie. That's one where, you know, you're, you're, you're going to sense a consistent theme with me and my sister uh, where we like to watch movies. I think that is the only movie I've ever seen twice in the same day, okay. like in a theater. So I, we went to see it and my sister went to the University of Illinois in Champaign and I went to school 45 minutes south at Eastern Illinois. So mm -hmm. we went to go, I was going to visit her. We saw it up there. And then when we're driving back, we're one of the things that we pass by is a theater. And she's like, hey, you want to go see it again? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I uh, we saw it twice in, in one day. It's still the only movie that I can remember that I've seen twice in the theater in the same day at two different theaters, nonetheless. Um, and it is the guiltiest of guilty pleasure movies. I, I fully understand. Um, number one, this version of Constantine is not like the version of Constantine in the in the comics. I, I get it. I, I do. Um, but it just it just worked for me. I I love it. It's it's so it's almost so dumb that it's laughable, but I still appreciate it so much. So I I'm a sucker for any superhero movies, and there's a fair amount of them that I've seen that I'm like, yeah, I could have could have done without without this one, but that's one that I know it's on the, the lower end of the spectrum for a lot of people for superhero movies, but not, not for me. It's not, not up to the very top, but it's still pretty, pretty good up there. Yeah, I think in 2022, people would want to see Keanu Reeves come back as Constantine. Yeah, I think he's even admitted that he's like, look, I've, I've tried. I've tried to, to go back to that, but they just won't, won't do it because it didn't make it enough money. And like, well cool like i'm glad that you've at least tried keep trying because i i think we're in an age where everybody is just go back to previous roles and you know just go from there so i'm, I'm hoping that that one eventually will will get get another chance 
even on a streaming service, who knows? But but yeah. Put on HBO Max. Why not? Just do it. Why not? They've they've got a pretty good track record, so especially after Why not, right? Maker. I'll definitely take it. Yeah, absolutely. James Gunn's Constantine starring Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I I'm there. I, I would be there already. So, so there you go. It's good. <laughs> now all you need to do is Warner is do it. We're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Get it circling back to a question that you already alluded to, which is my last question for you, Mike, is what do you love most about movies? So the 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 three pre, the three things that I kind of laid out. So the, the first thing I love about movies is just kind of the way that make you feel. So, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's whether you're laughing so hard that it makes you cry or just something gets you at the right exact time of when you needed to see something uh, and it, it makes you cry, it makes you smile. Um, I, I remember a movie a lot based on how it made me feel. So mm-hmm. that's something that I love about movies. Um, and kind of just to connect with that is just the memories that you make uh, from movies. When, when I was in high school, um, one of the things that our friends uh, would like to do is just these big tentpole movies. Um, we'd gather as many people as we could uh and just crowd into the theater and and go um you know we we were those people who also like we'd dress up dress up if the opportunity came about with that so i i remember going to see i believe star wars episode three and i was dressed up as r2d2 for that so you know the memories that you you make just like going to to the movies um which is something that I didn't realize how much I missed it uh, during the pandemic, um, but now that we're, you know, it's it's a little a little bit more safe to go to to the theater again. Um, you know, I've I've got a group of friends that we've gone to the movies um, once a month. You know, just mm. and I forgot how much I miss going to the movies with a group yeah. of friends. Uh, so there's that, and then just the the spectacle that you can get from watching watching a movie. Um, that's not to say that you can't get that same spectacle on TV, uh, which TV is catching up. Uh, it's not neck and neck like some people say. It's catching up in terms of the spectacle that it can create, um, but it will never replace the spectacle of watching something on screen that's like, whoa, that is, you know, like, like for me, some of those spectacles, like other than Lord of the Rings and the Avengers, you know, like you said, I, I remember the first time I saw Jurassic Park in in theaters. It was like, oh, it must have been amazing. Like that's that's a dinosaur, straight up. That's that's a dinosaur. I don't know what Spielberg did or what he what he wished for in order to get this to to come true, but he he created a dinosaur right right then and there. Yeah, like that's that's amazing. Um, but just, just these epic things that you see on screen that like, wow, this is, this is, this is just amazing. This is amazing. This is something that I've never seen before, never experienced before. Um, so, so yeah, those, I really thought about this and those are the three things that I just love about movies, movies the most. I, um, I think the one movie experience that I've had since COVID that really reminded me of how much fun it is to go to the movies was seeing Jackass forever, almost choking on my mask because I was laughing so hard in my seat. I'm just like, this is the dumbest thing ever, but this is exactly what I needed right now. Loved it. Loved it. I... I, we picked that as our February movie. Okay. Uh, it was between that or Uncharted, and um, not enough. Of, not enough of my friends uh, from here had played the video game, so there was less appreciation. Plus, yeah. most of my friends they're Xbox people, uh, and I'm the only PlayStation person, so mm. I can't convince them otherwise. Which is fine. That's neither here nor there. Yeah. But Jackass was a pretty easy pick for us because we grew up watching Jackass uh, on on MTV. Um, during that time we weren't those kids who would do the stunts because we didn't have 
we didn't have the stones to do them, but yeah. it was still fun to watch. And I got to say, it has been a long time since I've laughed that hard in, in a theater um, for just something so ridiculous as, yeah. you know, nut shots and, you know, people getting hit by animals. Sometimes simple is best. Yeah. Right? And that was <clears throat> that was so worth the trip to the movies. I had so much fun with that. Yeah. But Mike, thank you so much. Now my wild card at the end of every episode is I left my guest ask me a question. So what would you like to ask the Wasteland reviewer? Oh, that is not what I was expecting for the wild card, but it's it's all good. Um, hmm. Let me think. Because I've, I've tried to ask you some things along the way, and you've got some pretty good questions here. So um, I guess I'll go, because the one that I'm curious the most uh, with you is, um, why do you love movies? It's always been the escape for me. Because like I was a really quiet kid. I didn't really have friends growing up a whole lot. And I was a bookworm, I played video games, and I watched movies. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm trying to get back into reading, but predominantly... Yeah, that on your YouTube channel. It's good yeah. stuff. So I'm trying to get back into that because I used to read a lot <laughs> growing up. But as an adult, movies had really taken that spot. And you could probably tell I have a lot. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just, <laughs> just, just a little bit. A little. Uh, <laughs> But it's something that from when I was a kid, it's just like being able to sit in front of a movie and just being transported somewhere. Mm -hmm. And why I love fantasy, I love science fiction, I love Westerns, nothing against, you know, your very human drama, but like a drama has to be something really special to like hook me and get me that engrossed in it. And there's definitely plenty out there, but like, I love, you know, some of my favorite films are, I love Lord of the Rings. I love Mad Max, mm -hmm. um, Mad Max, Road Warrior, Fury Road, sorry, Thunderdome, um, <laughs> 2001 A Space Odyssey, Ben-Hur, and, and anything the Coens. <laughs> like, they, they're real life, but like, <laughs> the Coen brothers real life feels like a very different real life and that's why it feels like you get escaped and like i love shrek i unabashedly love shrek and shrek 2 so much and those are films i could those are films i can literally throw on and just watch any day and probably quote the whole entire thing just like will smith can in i am legend i'm just like oh my god i'd be that guy i would literally sit there and watch shrek every day um but like it's that escapism and being able to be lost in something and I love, and as I've matured and really thought about, it's like the thing that really speaks to me is like, it's a visual medium. So the visuals and being able to see what an artist can do with a camera and what they could do with that. If some, if a film does something like that, at least it has my attention. Um, something drab has to really go above and beyond to like really grab me. But like something where I could just look at and just see this is this is film and this is magical. I'm just I just rewatched Hugo for my other show. I'm just like oh. I had this whole new appreciate reappreciation of cinema and stuff like that just drummed up. But yeah, I appreciate the question, and that's definitely something. It's like it's always been the escapism for me. Mm -hmm. I and that's why the theater is so great. It's the dark theater. You put your phone away and you're just lost in it could be anything yeah. and that makes it so much better absolutely but mike thank you so much for coming on and chat with me today oh well, thank thank you i really appreciate it had a lot of fun so thank you as did i and thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your wasteland reviewer